Let's talk astrophotography part two. Uh, you're watching Exophotography. Uh, my name is Daniel. Uh, in the last video, uh, when I talked about getting started in astrophotography, I talked about uh, how to use a star tracker. Today, I was thinking that I might uh, been thinking of uh, uh, presenting the part two, where I talk about uh, if you want to step up your game a bit. Uh, if you want to uh, shoot with a bigger lens or perhaps uh, if you have a telescope uh, how these uh, go-to mounts uh, differs from the star tracker uh, and how to use it or basically how um, every equatorial go-to mount uh, works uh, whether they are uh, small or big or cheap or expensive basically how the basics are. So, as you can see, this uh, equatorial mount uh, uh, has a built-in optical axis uh, to polar align. Uh, this is the same procedure as how you polar align a star tracker, but you have these uh, bigger knobs uh, and you can basically um, fine-tune it to a, a, a large degree. You can also use the built-in uh, polar line routine in the hand controller. You can also connect these to the computer and you can run it off uh, uh, a USB cable. Uh, you can also run it via a Wi-Fi adapter so you can connect your phone uh, and your tablet. But these guys are basically around from uh, 400 bucks up to well, there's no upper limit in this hobby, and you probably have figured that out already. Um, these mounts can carry a bigger load. Uh, I have mounted a Mead Series 5000 uh, 102 millimeters uh, apochromatic refractor. Um, but I will take you through uh, how to align these boys, and um, yeah. Okay, so let's fire uh, this one up. Um, here I have a 12 volt uh, uh, power adapter, so I'm just going to plug it in and hit the on button. It says initializing on the hand controller. It will show the uh, version of the firmware into the hand controller. Just press enter. Uh, it says warning. Never look at the sun, then you might burn your eyes out. Uh, just press OK. Uh, you are then asked to enter your location, so you have to look that up. Um, you can get it on uh, Google Earth or something, uh, some app on the phone. Uh, I showed you the uh, PS Align app for polar aligning the Star Tracker. Uh, that one shows your uh, coordinates. So just enter your location and press enter. You have to set the time zone. So I live in the uh, plus one hour here in Sweden. You also need to set the elevation above the sea level. Um, this is 50 meter something above sea level. And then you have to enter the date. Um, and be aware it's the two first digits is the month. So it's June the 10th actually uh, in a two weeks it's midsummer eve here in Sweden so we take out our big uh, <coughs> and dress them in uh, leaves and bushes and stuff and dance around like frogs uh, it's real fun you should try it so just enter the date press enter enter what time it is have to check that okay 26 enter so we have entered 
our location, the date and the time. Daylight savings, well, yes it is. Use these up and down arrows, press enter. And this is where it gets uh, interesting. Polaris position, so it actually shows in what posi position the uh, Polaris uh, is located. So right now, uh, if I want to uh, tune in the Polaris star to get polar line, I have to put the star at the position of um, 40 minutes over 1. Uh, press enter. Uh, enter again. And then you have a question of begin alignment. We will say yes. And then you have to choose between a 1 star alignment, 2 star alignment, 3 star alignment, cone error alignment. I won't go into this one. NP error. So I usually do a uh, 1 star align uh, to get my um, polar alignment right. So I will press 1 star align and it um, uh, shows you, uh, gives you a, a suggestion of which star to align on. In this case, choose your first star, which is uh, Arcturus. So I don't know where it is right now because it's too bright outside. I will hit enter and the mount will start to slew. Uh, I am not going to see any star uh, in this uh, eyepiece right now. Well, actually, I don't have a eyepiece mounted, um, but you get my point. If I am happy with the alignment, it says in the hand controller it's slewing just yet. And there we go. It says use directions keys to center the object. So the first slew uh, it probably will miss um, with a couple of degrees. So you have to look inside the eyepiece and fine tune the position and press enter. So it says alignment successful. Actually this doesn't know that I don't know if the star is visible. But I will press enter. Okay, so that is basically it. You don't need to do any more alignment if you just want to look at a star. Uh, if you want to use your camera uh, you can get a, a better alignment with using more stars and also fine-tuning the um, uh, polar alignment with the built-in uh, polar alignment routine. One of the uh, advantages of using a computerized go-to mount is that you can, uh, after you have aligned the stars, you can easily just type in what uh, object you want to look at or photograph. So just type in uh, the galaxy right now, it's pointing to uh, M51, the Whirlpool galaxy. Uh, but if I uh, say M81, I want to look at that, just put in uh, 81 in the Messier catalog. It also has a built-in catalog of 44,000 celestial objects, uh, nebulous galaxies, uh, global uh, star clusters, open star clusters, uh, you name it. So just type M81, it will show you the coordinates and ask you to view the object and we will push enter and off it goes. Um, while it's loose to the M81 galaxy, uh, you might notice this smaller telescope which is mounted on the side. This is actually a finder telescope, which has a, a lot smaller uh, magnification. So it will be a lot easier to uh, search a bigger part of the sky uh, to nail the objects, uh, to put them in the center of the uh, eyepiece. You might also wonder, well, what it is? Uh, it's a counterweight. Uh, you actually want to um, balance the whole telescope uh, so it's nice and smooth in both axes. Oh, you can see it's a bit heavy here, so I need to push this in. So you want a nice 
and balanced telescope so the motors uh, uh, won't work as hard um, as they has to um, there are two clutches one in the uh, right ascension axis uh, the right ascension axis is the axis uh, which follows the ecliptican which is the path all the objects has uh, uh, across the sky uh, this is the uh, most crucial axis to um, have a nice guiding uh, with if you want to uh, get started with uh, photographing um, you also have a, a declination axis and it's uh, this one here you also want to get that nice and balanced so if you read something about astrophotography you have probably uh, heard of uh, uh, guiding um, these mounts uh, ain't uh, the best for uh, taking astrophotography with, without guiding it has some backlash in the gears uh, it also uh, needs to be guided with a separate telescopes one of those will actually do uh, not just this one because it has a, a illuminated eyepiece a crosshair eyepiece but there are finder scopes or actually guiding scopes in the same size but will accommodate a uh, small guide camera um, I might get uh, another video done uh, on guiding however I don't guide my mount in my observatory uh, because the motors are uh, constructed um, uh, quite differently uh, this is step motors uh, with belt drives you have a onboard computer uh, that will help you find objects if you align it properly uh, polar alignment is uh, crucial as always in astrophotography you just can't cheat with the polar alignment if it ain't good it won't get you good pictures um, so the main thing to look at is load capacity uh, what kind of telescope you actually want to uh, use is a question with actually connects with the question of uh, which mount I want to use but uh, go with a big and sturdy mount um, because you are going to be able to use that even if you change the telescope to a bigger one you might go with a model bigger on a uh, mount so yeah uh, that's basically it um, so this is a step up from where you uh, has pushing the limits of what a star tracker can do um, a star tracker uh, will carry a load of uh, possibly up to five kilos it can, could take the uh, smaller refractor telescopes like a space cat or maybe a 70 or 80 millimeter uh, but that's the limit for star tracker if you want to uh, go bigger than that uh, you might want to look at uh, one of the equatorial mounts there are also alt azimuth mounts uh, but I won't recommend those uh, because if you thinking of getting involved with astrophotography uh, you have to have the equatorial mount which is uh, aligned uh, with the uh, earth axis thank you for watching this video um, have a nice summer, I know I will. Uh, I will keep uh, posting videos uh, involving my projects uh, this summer and I hope to uh, get started with uh, uh, solar uh, photography. Stay tuned.